Hey, what's up everyone? James from Junkyard Fox. Thank you so much for joining me. And today we got ourselves something out of an easy video. I wanna talk about boot knives. Now, I've been carrying boot knives going on about eight years already, and there's not a lot of information and they're not very popular in the prepping slash bushcraft community as opposed to say something like a neck knife. But I would disagree and say that I much prefer to have a boot knife. So I'm gonna talk about why I carry one, what are the advantages, and what exactly am I carrying? So thank you for joining me. Let's get started. And yes, I did have to remove my damn boot to make this video. So let's talk about boot knives. Now, boot knives are famous in folklore and legends more than they are in reality. You know, we're used to hearing stories about the Old West and gamblers and saloons getting into fist fights and, you know, stuff like that when the table got flipped over, someone called someone else a cheater. Uh, also in pop culture, whether it's Rambo or Snake from Metal Gear Solid 3, Din Djarin from The Mandalorian, they look really badass when they pull out their knife, you know, to defend themselves. And it's more of a tactical thing than anything. Believe it or not, I'm not in the military. I am not Spetsnaz, so I have no authority to speak about, you know, self-defense and using your blade for that kind of stuff. Would it be useful in a situation like that? Of course, but I don't think it's going to be the more pra the more practical approach to having a blade for that kind of stuff. But, you know, better to have it and not need it, right? I know that a lot of people like to have a neck knife. I did try the neck knife a few years back, and I honestly found it very cumbersome. You just feel it bouncing around. Even when you have it under your shirt, I just didn't like the feeling of it so I've been carrying a boot knife going on about eight years probably at this point nine and I like to just have a backup cutting tool we all have our pocket knife in our jeans but sometimes you know you always want to have something extra whether you're out camping you're out hunting something like that and you may lose your knife or whatever the case may be if you know me you know that I like to baby my belt knife a lot more because I like to keep it razor sharp because that's the knife that's going to be gutting the fish and that's going to be doing all the camp prep that kind of stuff so i generally avoid doing the menial tasks like cutting through plastic and cardboard and that kind of stuff that's where the boot knife comes in it's it's the workhorse it's the mule and uh, does all the thankless tasks but i have it here at the same time it's discreet and out of the way i just roll my jeans down and it's between the boot and myself now, obviously, I wear cowboy boots. I know majority of people watching aren't wearing them. So, you know, you know, mileage may vary. All I know is I use the ear loop of my boot to attach the sheath. And no problem there. Once again, I don't have to worry about this rubbing on my cap or anything because it's on the outside. But at the same time, the jeans are going to go down and cover this. All I got to do when needed is just lift them up and pull out the blade. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I did try to do the neck knife thing a few years back and it did not work for me at all. You either have it exposed and it's dangling everywhere and people you're getting looks from people at the store and stuff like that. Or even if you tuck it down, you just feel it against your chest. It just feels odd and you start sweating on it and it just uh, didn't like it. Not at all. So I much prefer this. It's discreet. It's out of the way. It's not, you know, you, you forget it's there. And, you know, if you need to be in a place where you're more subtle, for example, you need a put away your, the, your belt knife stuff like that you're still gonna have the comfort of knowing that you do have a cutting tool on your boot and let's face it this looks awesome this looks really cool it evokes once again the old west or like an assassin or something like that so I think it looks really awesome now as with all things folks you know check your laws ch check your local laws and stuff like that I don't want you to take advice from me in this video and then you wear this and then you get in trouble and now you got you know you got a charge for concealing a weapon or something like that I don't have to worry about that in Texas but wherever you're at that may be a different case so let's talk about the knives that I carry and why what are the requirements for me personally when it comes to a belt knife so here are three different boots that I wear throughout the years and I generally always have the boot knife on my right hand side I am a right-handed person so I'm gonna have it out here and I do have it on the outside I know some people want to have it concealed in here but do you really want this rubbing against your cap all day and you're sweating and that kind of stuff I think I I've never tried it but it just doesn't seem appealing at all it's just to me just better to have it out here 
Now, I am wearing cowboy boots. I know majority of people watching don't wear cowboy boots or at least a high top of some kind. If that's the case, guys, you're just gonna have to figure out how to attach a boot knife if you're so inclined. Me, I use the ears of the cowboy boot and they don't have to be cowboy boots. These are work boots over here and they also have ears. So I was able to do that just fine. So these are the boots that I've been wearing the last two years. These are Moonshine Spirits and this is the boot knife that I've been wearing. A requirement for me when it comes to a boot knife these last couple years is it has to be a fixed blade. It tends to be thicker than my belt knife. This one is 1 8 inch thick. I don't want it too overly thick because it still want, I still want it to be a little slicey. It, I just want it to be tough enough where if I have to cut through you know, something a little harder, I don't have to worry about it too much. Also, when it comes to steel, I am not a steel snob, guys. I, can, I don't care that much about it. I generally keep a very simple steel because there's going to be a lot of sweat moisture generated here during the summer months when I'm running around or if I'm fishing and my legs get wet in the stream, walking around in the snow or the mud, whatever the case may be. The boot knife isn't something that I'm going to be removing and checking every single day. I should, but I don't, to be completely honest. So this is something like a 420HC, nice and simple. So I don't have to worry too much about corrosion. A simple type of steel, a, a tough steel, a little thicker of a blade and fixed blade. Just make it a full tang blade. Now this one right here was custom made for me by a longtime viewer, James Hyde. James, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I love this blade right here. And as you can tell, it's not that large and it's not that heavy. Also, I don't want it too heavy, but it's still capable of doing what I need it to do. If something happened to my fixed blade knife, I lent it out, I lost it, it's damaged, it got dinged up. I could still use this if need be to do some light batoning. It could still do some, you know, some slicing, some prep work. It can still gut a fish. Yeah, this is a prime example of what I personally look for. And the sheath, once again, the sheaths, this is a big problem too, is a lot of knife makers don't focus on sheaths for boots because they're not that popular. I got this from Etsy. This is obviously meant to go through a belt. So if it can go through a belt, you can run some string through it. I have some bank line here and you run it through the boot ear as well. And it's gonna be fine. Now, obviously it's moving around like this. But once again, keep in mind, you're going to have your pants leg. That's going to kind of keep it from moving around too much. Not a big deal. And of course, you want some great retention. You don't if you had to go through, you know, you had to make a quick jog. You, you shot an animal and you're going to chase after it as it dies. You know, you don't, you don't want to be running in this to come loose. You know, you don't want it to lose your knife or worse, hurt yourself. So you want some good retention. And I like that this sheath has incredible retention without it being you know, a bit of a pain when you're trying to remove it or place it back in. So now this boot knife is relatively new. I've had it a little bit less than a year. I love it, but let's go over here. Now this is my older boot and this boot knife I've had going since late 2019, early 2020. And this is the Exodus Knife and Tool Adventure Craft. Now this is the original version before he, uh, before Jacob moved it to White River Knives. I forget who was the original maker, Min, uh, Mineral Hatchet and Mountain Work, something like that. I'll annotate it down below. Still the same overall shape and design. It's a little bit snazzier now. This is a little bit more of a simple working, working man's knife as opposed to the modern day Exodus knives. Now this is the same criteria. 1 8 inch thick. A simple steel, this is 1084 steel. Now they're a little bit fancier. I think they're S35VN, something like that. But once again, this is 1084 with a coating on there. So I don't, once again, have to worry about rust or anything like that. Uh, particularly this one, because I use this one a lot when fishing. So once again, I'm around water, I'm gutting animals. So, you know, there's blood and that kind of stuff. So I don't want something that I forget and then it gets, it starts to tarnish. So I do have a full review on this one. I'll have it up here in the corner if you want to check it out. Great little knife, my Carta handles. And this one does have some Kydex. Now this is the Kydex sheath, same thing as I mentioned earlier. So this is going to be tough. It's going to be a little tougher than the leather. It does take a little bit more work. And I do apologize for <laughs> my shoddy craftsmanship here, tying this together. So this one, 
I just wrapped around with the ear and it's paracord and I melted the ends of the paracord. So it's very ugly. I don't worry about it too much. I mean, look at my boots. They're ugly to begin with. So, I'm, you know, they're not winning beauty contests. These are just out to be, you know, out in the field. And once again, I'm wearing jeans over this. So I have it nice and tucked away until they're needed. And yeah, love this little blade. Really awesome. And I've had other boot knives before. I did have an LT right. What the JX2, I want to say JX3. I'll annotate it down below. And that one I wore as a boot knife for a couple of years. Looking back, I don't think that one was the best choice. It was a little heavy and it was a little short and stout. So it wasn't uh, it wasn't ideal for me. And eventually I ended up just not using that as a boot knife anymore. I prefer lightweight and slender boot knives as opposed to that one that just had a more of a belly and stuff like that. But I could definitely see a couple of LT right knives being useful for that as a boot knife. And lastly, let's move on over here. This, I'm breaking my own rules here to try something different. So as I mentioned with these two, I like a fixed blade, relatively thick, one eighth inch thick, lightweight with the tight sheath and a simple steel, right? That's the basic formula for my boot knives. And for this one, I wanted to do something different. So these are my Brunt boots. Big thank you to Brunt Workwear for sending this to me to use. Now these are more for you know, camping out in winter in the snow and stuff like that. But I live in the desert, so I didn't get a chance to, to do that. But same thing, as you can tell, these are not necessarily cowboy boots. These are more like if you're a construction worker, something like that, working in docks and all that kind of stuff. So they're gonna be meant for, you know, hard use. But at the same time, they once again, they do have ears that you can pull on and I, I do the same thing. So this one recently used some bank line. You can tell how much tidier and more organized I am when it comes to <laughs> attaching a boot knife from four years ago to now. And in this one, I wanted to do something different and have something of a multi-tool. So for this one, I'm trying to use a Swiss Army knife. I have this little loop. I pull this out and I have a little Victorinox Cadet A-Lock. So it gives me a cutting tool once again cutting through clamshell packaging and rubber and stuff like that stuff that I don't want to use my belt knife for but at the same time I kind of think you know for everyday carry I have the bottle opener for when it's party time I have a screwdriver on me at all times a can opener as well and this is a small nail file probably not the most useful of items for everyday carry but it does have its uses so mileage may vary if you would prefer to use something different like the victorinox farmer or something like that get yourself a little sheath like this i got this at uh a western wear store cavenders i believe it's called and this was like 25 bucks i've, I've seen nicer ones and crappier ones so they're not that expensive all you really need is something that's gonna have good retention for your boot knife and you can just easily just wrap around also check Etsy if you're looking for something that's probably a little more snazzier. So that's about it for this video, folks. It's nothing too terribly long or complicated. Longtime viewers know that I've been wearing a boot knife going back since the beginning, since I first got into everyday carry and survival and the outdoors and stuff like that. Once again, it stems from living in Texas and there's a lot of folklore when it comes to Western outlaws and stuff like that. And I wanted to incorporate that into EDC. But at the same time, there's just not a lot of information outside of pop culture, you know? And that's why I think they're not more popular. So I just wanna give you guys my perspective on why I carry them and what are the requirements for me to carry a good boot knife. Now I've used several of them. Some worked better than others. I used Amora at one point, it was too long. Uh, I used some other ones that were a little too heavy and, and chunky. So these once again are my perfect ones for me personally. A simple steel, full tang with a thicker blade. And uh, of course you want some good retention on your sheets. Now, once again, I am wearing cowboy boots and that may not be for everyone so you know if you don't have these ears you'll have to you'll have to ask someone else for advice on how to attach them onto your boot and then i am breaking my rule a little bit and trying something a little bit more experimental over here i am leaving behind the full tang i'm leaving behind the thicker of the the thickness of the blade 
Obviously, this is going to be something a little thinner, more delicate, but at the same time, to have as a backup cutting tool, at the same time, you know, it wouldn't hurt to have these other tools like a can opener and bottle opener and a screwdriver, whether I'm out camping, on a hiking trip, fishing trip, or on the job site. Comment down below if you do wear a boot knife, and if so, what is the boot knife model that you're carrying? What are the requirements that made that knife perfect for you? Let's get that conversation going. Give us a thumbs up if you did enjoy this video and would like to see more like this. Don't forget to subscribe. We are moving to 100,000 subscribers, hopefully by the end of this year. And we'll see you guys next week with another video. Now go outside and get your boots dirty. Get your boot knives dirty. <laughs> All right, let's get going. I'm gonna put it on because there's so many damn stickers out here.